Hi and welcome to another tutorial on remote server administration. Today we will learn how can we set up Windows shares using remote servers ad administration tools. Now we will be setting up a core installation of Windows server which is a command line interface. As you can see that it does not have a graphical user interface so whatever we'll be doing we'll be doing it using the commands or we'll be trying to access it from our Windows Server 2019. So since it's a core installation of our file server which we'll be using through remote server administration we'll be using our actual Active Directory which we set it up last time in order to set up shares on our file share and in order to run different rules and uh, uh, policies on our remote server. So we'll be learning how can we manage the file shares as well as how can we manage other servers using our main server which is Windows Server 2019 in our case today. So if you haven't covered how can we set up Windows uh, Active Directory and how can we set up DNS and uh, um, normal firewall etc you can follow the videos on our channel. So today since we'll be working on our core installation of uh, Windows Server 2019 so we'll go to our this windows which is the core installation of windows server 2019 which will be used as the file server now just keep in mind that uh, why do we need a core uh, version of windows server it has a very small footprint it does not consume lots of resources and it is really effective in fight against any sort of attacks and things like that since it does not have a graphical user interface so uh, you need certain skills in order to manage it so that if anyone would gain access to the server they won't be able to do much with that so um, this is our main server now in order to get started first let's try to ping and see if we can access internet on this one um, as you can see we are getting a response and if I would like to see the um, uh, the IP address of this one you can see that it is actually getting an IP address from our DHCP server and we set it up a Linux based DHCP server in our previous video you can watch that how can you set it up but at the moment it is getting the IP address from there but since we are setting it up for the uh, file sharing services we need to have a dedicated IP address on this one uh, so we'll have to set it up accordingly on our system now in order to do that, in order to make the changes on this one, we'll have to go to the uh, main interface of it through which we can manage it. And in core installation, if you'll type in sconfig and you'll enter, it would take you to the uh, interface, which is not a graphical user interface, but you can see lots of things much clearer way in this one where you can make certain changes to your server operating system. So in order to recognize it on the network, as you can see, it is at the moment a fresh installation of it. So it's taking a um, generic name, uh, which is there after the installation of Windows. It's not even joined to the network and uh, we have checked the IP address of it. So the first thing that we would do in this one is that we would like to change the name of this server. So in order to change that, um, you'll have to press two since it's on number two over here. So we'll press number two and press enter it would ask you for the name of the computer so we'll call it uh, file share zero one and I'll name it as uh, with my first name and then press enter it would ask you that would you like to restart the server you'll press yes and it won't take much time it would restart the server very fast as compared to the normal server installation since it's the core installation of server operating system as you can see it's back I'll provide my just the password on this one and uh, it would log into the same screen where we were we were working on sconfig um, if it won't show you you can just type in sconfig and it would take you to the same screen where we just changed the name of it now we'll have to join it to the domain so um, before we will join it to the domain I would really need to change the IP address of this computer so in order to change the IP address of this server you can see it on number 8 
it is network setting so i'll press number eight and it would show me the interface of it which is uh, a uh, dynamic uh, address which is acquired by dhcp so in order to change that i'll press one since it's appearing on number one and it would show me that uh, what would you like to change on this one um, so first of all i would try to have a static ip address on this one so in order to do that i'll press one and uh, it would ask me that would you um, like i would like to have a dynamic or a static ip address of course i'm defining it for the static ip address i'll press s and enter and it would ask you for the ip address so in my case i am entering the ip address as uh, uh, 10.0.5.8 press enter um, I'll have uh, the gateway as subnet mask as 255.255.255.0 um, enter the default gateway now how can you find the default gateway so in order to check that we'll have to go to our either workstation or server operating, operating system and check that which gateway is actually used over there so we are here on our workstation which is joined to the domain i'll type in ipconfig slash all and it would give me the details of it that what is the ip address and rest of the details for our system so as you can see that the default gateway is 10052 and our dns server is 10056 dns server is actually your active directory so that's what we'll set it up on our file server so since now we know the gateway we'll enter it 10.0.5.2 and it would just save the configuration over there now if i would like to change the D dns server on it as well um, i can change that as you can see that there is an option that set dns server i'll press number two and i'll enter the dns server as uh, our active directory which is 10.0.5.6 um, and press enter so now it would save that configuration as well it would press ok and then it's asking that if you need any other address i said no and then i'll just uh, return to the main menu now if i would like to go to the main menu i'll press 4 and now i'll have to join it to the domain so i'll press 1 over here since uh, it's asking and then um, if i would like to join it to the domain i'll press d and then um, it is asking the name of the uh, domain so i'll type in the name of my domain which is a dot local and then it would ask me for the uh, account name and i'll type in say it and then i'll type in and then it would ask you for the password after that it would ask you that would you like to restart just press yes so that it would restart and it would join your computer to the domain so it came back after the restart you can see that it is joined to the domain it has even changed the name of the computer and uh, rest of the things is fine so that's all what we needed to do on um, the server now we'll go to our um, active domain controller and we'll try to control this server from there so now as you can see we are on our domain controller and we configured the domain last time and dns on this one now today we'll see that how can we install remote server administration tool on that just keep in mind that it's a feature of windows server that we'll have to add it's not a role so if we'll click on manage and if you would like to add any roles and features we'll select this thing as add roles and features and then we'll press next and after that it would ask you for the default settings we'll go according to that at the moment we have only one server over here um, we'll click next and it's asking for roles but we'll click on features over here so that we can add the features then you'll select on this remote server administration tools further you'll expand remote administration tools over here you'll scroll it a little bit then we'll click on file services tools and we'll have to select file services uh, resource manager tools on this one 
and then press next so that it can install it once that's done press close and now we'll go to all servers over here and since it's not added over here so we'll have to add the file server over here so in order to add it we'll right click on all servers add server and then i'm going to type in fs and since it's part of the domain it should appear over here you'll click on this one click on this button so that you have it over here press ok and it would be added to the list over here so that we can add it or manage it from our server 2019 which is our domain controller now once that's done once that's done we'll click on tools and we'll go to active directory users and computers and as you can see that we are in our Active Directory users and computer and if you remember we created a organizational unit and we created certain subgroups in this one. Um, in the computers which are joined to the domain we have added it to the group. Um, in the users we had two accounts as Elise and Bob and uh, then in groups I created a security group over there called sales-users and now what I would do is that since it's a security group I would like to add a lease to this one and uh, since we'll be creating a shared folder um, using the remote server administration tools on our file server and then I'll give certain permissions on that folder and we'll check that how can Elise have full access to the folder and Bob don't have any access to that shared folder. Now we are on our server manager. Um, if you're on the dashboard, you'll click on all servers and you'll be able to see these servers. Now, since file server is added for remote server administration, we'll be able to install certain tools on our file server by our Active Directory. So we don't need to go to our file share server individually and set up certain things on this one. So in order to do that, I'll right click on this one and I'll select uh, add server roles and features and after that I'll press next and then we'll press next on this one we'll go uh, just make sure that you have your file server selected over here then press next and here we'll have to click on file and storage services and then we'll click on we'll click on file and iSCSI services and then I'm going to select this manager from here so I'll add that feature then I'll press next and next to install it once that's done we'll close it and uh, now we can right click on this one and we'll open a uh, windows powershell on this one because we are going to write a command on this one so that we can have remote file server resources manager and management enabled on this uh, remote server which is our file share server so once we are here on our powershell we'll type in a command which is uh, um, net sh adv firewall firewall rule set and we are setting a rule for remote file server resource manager and uh, management for new employees press enter it would update it rules means that now it has enabled the remote file server resource management on our remote server which is a file server now in order to check that we'll go to our local servers and uh, then we'll click on file and storage services we'll uh, click on the servers on this one and then i'll right click on my file server and you'll be able to see this new file server resource manager which is appearing here now so if you click on it it would show you the quota and rest of the things which are allocated for the servers or you can allocate it from here now once that's done we'll have to create a share on our file server so that only Elise will have full access as read and write over there whereas Bob will not be able to make any modifications to the files. Now here before we'll set up the shares on this one there is a difference between a local permission and a share permission. A local permission is also called an NTFS permission uh, in which the permissions are applied only locally and not remotely on the operating system. It affects both the local files 
permissions as well as the remote files whereas the share permissions are the permissions that are applied only remotely to the operating system and the shares etc so if both shared and local permissions are set then the most restrictive permission wins that's the rule of thumb in a windows environment so in order to create a share we'll click on shares over here and uh, we'll try to create a share on this one so i'll right click and see share and then i'm going to um, share a folder or create the share now make sure that you're selecting the file share over here so that you are creating a shared folder on your share uh, which is a file share server uh, press next and then it would ask you for the name of it you can just name it as share and here also you can verify that the name is appearing as file share press next we'll keep the default options enabled and here since we need to um, make the modifications where we have a security group we'll have to add it over here and uh, if it's not here you'll click on share and then you'll add on this one and uh, you'll click on set a principle advanced you can find it and then you can find the sales group over here sales users press ok and then give them full permissions on this one press ok now you can see that all sales users will have full access to this folder whereas i'll remove everyone from this one apply the changes press ok press next and create now um, as you can see that it's completed you can close it i would like to show you one thing over here that if I'll go to users and computers and uh, if I am going to the uh, folder where I am giving the permissions to the users I'll open the user accounts over here and you can see that we have Elise and in Elise she's member of sales users so that's what we did that we granted the permissions to Elise for this folder whereas we didn't um, give any permissions to um, the uh, Bob's account so that he don't have any access to make any changes to that folder so now we'll have to check it that how does it really affect on the computer itself and we'll try to log in on our workstation to see that if Elise can access the folder and can make permissions on it and Bob shall not be able to make any changes to the folder now we will try to log in to Elise account and see if she has access to the folder. Just keep in mind that this is a domain joint computer so all the policies and everything whatever is there on the domain and the permissions would be reflected upon. So in order to check the permissions for Elise we'll go to uh, we'll right click and click on run and then we'll type in two backslashes and then uh, file server 01 dash the name of the server slash shares or share and press ok if the permissions are fine she must be able to access it as you can see she can access it even if i want i can create folders in this one and if i want to create a text file we'll be able to do that as well but on the other hand, if I'll try to log in to Bob's account, uh, Bob must not have access to it um, so that we are setting the permissions on the accounts based on the permissions. So let's try to log in on Bob's account. And we'll do the same. We'll go to run. We'll type in fs01 save and share. And press enter now it would open but it would tell that you don't have the permissions to make any changes to the folder so um, that was our tutorial to learn that how can we set up uh, windows file sharing services on windows server on a remote server administration tool and how can we manage the accounts using those services so that's it for today thank you very much